It's good to have. Good morning, New Hope Fellowship, and you that are here and you that are viewing. And I always like to give a shout out to be blessed with my messianic friend, Phil. Always like to say that. I embarrass him. I don't care. I want blessings to bless special people like the chosen, the chosen people of God. And Phil has even stepped further into that chosenness by saying, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, I love you. Thank you for coming to my life. Amen, bro? Amen. Amen. And then his better half behind me, he's, my, he's really good, but his better half is behind me. And this is Carla. And then her, her assistant is Bob. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyway, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's a house of praise. We praise the Lord. We, we do the best that we can in every part of our life. But the, the process is, is that, Lord, we look to you who will help us in every way of our life. And it's not just on Sunday, but it's every day. That's the beautiful thing about being a believer, friends that are viewing and you that are here. But before we go any further, let's stand and let's pray because... God asks us to be people of prayer. And the disciples said, Lord, would you teach me how to pray? He wants you to be yourself and to pray from your heart. And so we will do that even now. And then we will ask God to have his way in the service, however he wants to move in your life. By the way, Jesus is here. In the book of Hebrews says, Jesus, he sings amongst his brethren. I'm not going to get into that depth, but the Lord is here because you're here. How beautiful is that? We think, well, we, uh, maybe Bob might, or Carl might just hit the right note that Jesus shows up. Oh, the Holy Spirit, I don't believe in that theology. I believe he's already here. But it, hopefully through the song and the worship, you begin to show up and, and your focus is on him, on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, Father, we come with humble hearts to say thank you, Abba, Daddy, Papa, for your goodness to all of us. Have your way, Holy Spirit, as you move in my mind, our minds, our hearts, to focus on the Father's love who sent Jesus to help all humanity and forgive us on that cross. Thank you again for this morning, Lord. In Jesus' lovely name we pray, and every woman say, Amen. Amen. Good morning, family. Anybody get the opportunity to see uh, Sound uh, Freedom? Was, uh, uh, what, I'm not saying it right now. Uh, what's the name of it, title? Sound of Freedom. Yeah. If you haven't, great movie. Uh, I'm encouraged by um, how God uses us. <laughs> when he just made the little joke about being an assistant, I, I don't know if you heard me. I go, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm nobody, you know, I'm, but I'm everybody because I'm God's son. And you are God's son, and you are God's daughter. And just like in that movie, um, there was somebody that had something here birthed in his heart, and he acted out God's will for his purpose in his life, mm -hmm. and much was accomplished. Yes. Yes. So my encouragement to you as we sing and as we worship the Lord, we're sons and daughters of that God. Right. That one that is so capable to move in our behalf and see mountains move, see miracles done. Not because of me, Bob, or you, but because of Jesus in and through us. Amen. So Amen. this surf song means even more to me. My dad took a fall yesterday morning early, for those that aren't aware. And uh, he did break his wrist, so continue to pray for him. But he had a head injury, too, and the CT showed no uh, internal bleeding or fractures there. So praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Let's worship our, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, a 
Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we just pray, Lord, that you would be so present in our time with you right now, Lord God, that you will allow us to clear everything from our thoughts, Lord, and surrender everything to your will, Lord God, that we would be filled with your presence and your encouragement and your strength as you so are willing and wanting to do, Father God. Just bless your people, Lord. Jesus Messiah, Greg. <laughs> and he became sin who knew no sin that we may become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing, love so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed redeemer. Love so amazing, love so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel. 
rescued for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah.
Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy. And renew a right spirit, and renew a right spirit within me. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you desire to use us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that your love is real. We thank you that your presence is strong. And we ask for forgiveness, Lord God, when we doubt or when we fear or when we allow ourselves to listen to the lies and to fall into deeper depression, Lord God. I break that off of my brothers and sisters and our lives, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that we would be open vessels and surrender to you, Father God, to draw near to you, Lord God, that you might be able to show your power and strength through us as we're willing vessels, Lord. So teach us, Lord God, my prayer, how to draw closer to you, less of us and more of you. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. No one else will do Cause no one else can take your place To feel the warmth of your embrace Help me find the way And bring me back to you You're all I want, you're all I've ever needed, you're all I want, help me know you are near, draw me close to you. Let me go. I lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. No one else will do. Cause no one else can take your place To feel the warmth of your embrace Help me find the way Bring me back to you You're all I want You're all You're all I want. Help me know you are near. Help me know you are near. Help me know you are near. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That and you Carla. Amen. And the choir behind them, you may be seated. Isn't that neat to praise the Lord? And, and what a privilege to praise the Lord. Uh, God doesn't want just his angels to say hallelujah, glory to God in the highest. They want, he more importantly wants those made in his image, every tongue, tribe, and nation to know him and to praise him and to love him. And then out of that love, to love others too. God is an other-centered being, and he wants you to be the, another centered being, others, others too. So, Phil, you got a role, so it's good to see you. Phil and Carl, they have another engagement to do. Thank you, Phil. This is my this is our brother. You are honored. Always try to get a hug from him because he's messianic. He knows Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach. If you don't understand that, it's a deep truth. And uh, the Bible tells us to Abraham, he says, you who bless the Jews, you will be blessed. Now, this is a one who the Jews as a whole don't receive Jesus yet, but they will one day. And that's going to be a beautiful day, but it's, it's, uh, it's down the road. But when those who do come to the Lord, uh, uh, Jews, we call them Messianic Jews. They come to Messiah Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. Uh, well, uh, Bob is, he's uh, going out. I don't know if he's coming back in, but again, as you heard, uh, Bill fell. Bill Doucette, he, he's here. He makes the greatest coffee. Now, uh, if you don't like the coffee that I make, well, blame Bill, okay? I'm kidding you. Um, but... Um, Anyway, uh, we need to, to pray for Bill and Darlene. I'm so glad that he's alive. He broke his wrist really bad. The, the head injury was tremendous, what it looked like. And uh, so the takeaway is he's alive. And, and, and with a bad break, uh, it's tough, but at least he's here with us. But I know you go through stuff too. Uh, a special guest here, Betty, uh, BB's. Uh, sister, it's so welcome to have you. She's from Singapore to be with family. Her mom came with her, and she has other family here for a big wedding, but just to be with family, and that's wonderful. We're the family of God, too, and to come together on a weekly basis, but for Betty, I'm sure she talks to Bibi a lot, but to be together with her is so special, I'm sure, just like we as Christians should feel that same sense and desire to be together, too. You know, not just say, well, it's church, it's religion. No, no. It's relationship with him and one another. That's where the blessing comes. But I do want to encourage you, if you would stand with me, please, because we are all going through stuff. And, uh, Betty, there's a passage in Ezekiel 22.30. I look for a person to stand in the gap. In other words, there's been a, broke, a break in the wall. And there's breaks in people's lives, family lives. And you, God, is asking you to stand in that gap and do something about it. We went yesterday to Love Life. I'm wearing this shirt, very colorful. I'm not into this kind of color, but you know what? To save the unborn, I'm in. I am in. I mean, I've ever since Roe versus Way in 73, and I came to Jesus in 71, I couldn't believe it. That we just kill kids, kill babies, terminate them like Hitler did to the Jews. Are you kidding? No, I don't believe in that. And so when we had an opportunity to become part of Love Life about three years ago, we're in. And we're going to become, real quickly, a church house of refuge. We're, we have a place called the uh, uh, Chosen. I mean, uh, not Chosen, but Choices uh, down the street where young girls and young men who, you know, next thing you know, there's pregnancy. And they think, well, I don't want this kid. I wanted all the pleasure to to, and all of a sudden this happens, don't give up that baby. Don't murder it. And so there's going to be choices. And we're going to be a place, a house, a church of refuge to help these, these couples uh, make that transition. Or maybe give up to adoption like Margaret did. I mean, how beautiful. I mean, this child God's going to use. God doesn't want him in heaven yet. He wants us all in heaven one day. But this is your journey right now to... Learn about him and be kind and humble around with people, thinking of them more than me, myself, and I, or my four no more. God is desires that we would stand in the gap. And so, Betty, what we're doing, going to do, we're going to pray for, for like needs, like if there's financial needs. It's 
It's the middle of the month, coming near the end. People have needs financially. There's also needs to for in, in relationships and also needs for healing. We're going to pray for Bill. And maybe there's somebody here that needs a healing. You're thinking, well, wait a minute. I, I like doctors. I do too. Believe me, I'm, I'll be first in line there too. But I first want to go before the first in line one. I want to go to the Lord. Maybe he will heal and touch my, my body, whatever. God does work today. Jesus Christ, Hebrews chapter 13, 8 says this. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He wants to touch. But let your faith soar to say, God, yes, this is what I've been waiting for, to, to hear that you heal today. He does. So would you bow your hearts with me? And then at the end, I will ask you to get in your gap and say, Lord, I cast this care on you, whatever that may be. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for worship and, and the joy to give you adoration and to praise you and to thank you for giving our very life to us, but not only that, eternal life through Jesus who died on the cross for us. But Lord, we also have situations in our life where we get pressured from finances and different things and we, we put our eyes and our finances and these great needs and not to the, to the giver of all substance. You are Jehovah Jireh. You said you would provide. So I pray blessings on my friends your friends, Jesus, to meet their needs. I don't know how you do it, Lord, but you do. You cause it to rain on the just and the unjust. You cause that little seed, uh, like a mustard seed, to grow. Lord, let their finances be blessed, whatever they are involved in. And Lord, you love unity. Lord, there's an anointing and unity in marriages, in the church. Lord, out at our workplaces. At Lord, in our communities. Lord, we... We are people many times divided. Sometimes it begins right in the home. I rebuke that spirit of division, that deceiver in the name of Jesus over families, over marriages, over the church. We have that right. Jesus, you told us we can do that to ask the Father. And now, Lord, I would ask, you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. We pray, Lord, for healing for, for Bill. We soak him down. We've we anointed him already. We laid hands on him. But, Lord, we soak him down as the bride of Christ right here, green for our dear friend Bill, and we pray for Darlene as well. We thank you, Lord, for your love to them, but also too, Lord, we pray for healing for anyone in this room and then others that may even know people that are hurting and sick, that they would even believe, Lord, that you will heal them. And if, Lord, if there is a delay in that healing from above, then, Lord, you've given us doctors to help us. So we thank you for our doctors and nurses and all them. So, Lord, now we get a chance, each one of us, in our minds and our hearts, we know where there are struggling places in our life and in our families and where we work. We take this time to cast whatever care is on our heart before you, Lord. Friends, would you do that? Take a moment. Think where you're at and say, Lord Jesus, I cast my care on you. I'm hurting here. I give it to you. Thank you, Lord. To the God who cares, the God of compassion, the God who hears, the one who never sleeps nor slumbers. We thank you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus who's seated with you and also interceding for us. And Holy Spirit, we're crazy about you too. Oh God, Father, Son, and Spirit, in the precious name of Jesus we pray and everyone will say amen. Tell the person next to you, glad to see them, okay? Greg, my friends, the tailors. <laughs> I love this guy. Carlos. Good to see you. And did you, hey, did you bring Linda with you? Got to. I, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> hey, Lil. Hey, <laughs> Carol, it is yeah. so good to see Carol. She I came know. two weeks in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, think about the, the, the piano too. It might be able to, uh, might be able to work something out there. I don't know yet. Hi, Pastor. How are you? I got a puppy at home. You know what his name is? Max. Oh, hey, Jessica. Uh, you have one job to do. 
keep an eye on him. Keep Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> just a few announcements. Again, I just want to uh, encourage the women that this Monday is the Women's Bible Study at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Again, if you have any questions, you can see Sister Laura and also ladies that are here in the church. There is a number on the messenger that you can use to get on. Again, I just encourage you on that at 7 o'clock on Zoom. And on what Thursday nights is our men's Bible study downstairs at 7 o'clock. Again, I encourage you men to come out. It's a time that we're growing together. We're learning. And again, it's just an awesome time for brothers to be together. Gotcha. Amen. And then also on Wednesday night, here in the sanctuary at seven o'clock we have a time of prayer i can't stress how important prayer is i don't care what we do during the whole week but wednesday night is the should be one of the most important times of our lives to come in and, and pray corporately i know we could say well i pray at home but when you come yes you can but when you come in a corporate setting there's something that happens and i just want to encourage you you know pastor talked about brother bill uh, and Miss Darlene, but also there's a lot of you that know Miss Consuelo. Her husband has cancer. It's past stage four. He needs our prayers. His name is Henry as well as Consuelo. But the great news about even what he's going through, because we prayed for this man for years to give his heart to the Lord, and he did. You know, but they still need prayer. You know, the whole family does. But our nation needs a lot of prayer. You know, this, this is a, um, an election year. Again, know who your candidates are, who you're voting for. California just uh, blocked. There's six, I'm not going to mention who, but there was six people from a certain party that blocked SB 14, which would make it a felony if you got caught human trafficking. So what does that tell you? We're living in dark times. It's going to be like a slap on the wrist if they get caught. That's what I'm telling you. Read the bills. Read who you're putting in, in, into office. There's also a, a, another one. He's running for a Republican uh, presidency. They were asking him in an interview about Ukraine and all. He was more important, worried about Ukraine. When they asked him, what about the American people? He goes, that's not my concern. That's what I'm telling you. We need to understand who we're voting for. Vote what the Bible says. Like Pastor says, we stand in the gap for the unborn. That's what we believe. That's what we should all stand for. Believe and vote the Bible. Because if God tarries, guess what? It's your children that are going to suffer the consequences of our actions and our votes. So, again, remember that. Because if we don't stop it, guess what? Pastor ain't going to be up here to be preaching really what the Bible says. He's going to have to conform to the things of this world. No way. I know he's not, but that's what they're going to try to force us to do or go or go underground or go to jail. That's what I'm saying. That's why we come to prayer, to pray against this stuff, to pray for the children. So, again, pray for our pa not only Pastor Bob and Miss Barbara, but all the pastors, the missionaries. We need to pray for them. Pray for love life as well. And pray, like Pastor said, we are going to be a, a sanctuary church to help these couples and guide them to the right places that, you know, we would be able to minister that way as well. Amen? Remember also uh, the homeless ministry. Pray for that as well. You want to get involved? You want to donate? See Sister Lana on that as well. Remember next Saturday, or Sunday, I'm sorry, is our church picnic down at San Dimas Canyon Park. We, if you show up here at 8.30, we're not here. We'll be at the park. It does start at 10 o'clock. Uh, the church is providing hamburgers and hot dogs, but we are asking for you guys to bring a side dish and make sure that it is enough for everyone and also uh, for at least 10 people. And also, if we can get people to come a little earlier to help us set up, cover the tables and things like that. And if you want to donate candy for the piñata, you can see Ms. Barbara or and you can talk with her on how to do that as well. Amen? Yeah. Am I forgetting anything? Good. Good morning, everyone. So I'm here today to talk to you about missions. Um, Foursquare Disaster Relief um, has stepped in to assist with the Ukraine uh, situation, specifically with the attack that was done on the dam, and that was done about June the 6th. So what happened is they attacked the dam, so they broke it. 
and the water just came rushing down into the towns, into the cities, into the villages. So now that water is now contaminated. So there's no water for them. So the people are suffering. So what Foursquare Disaster is trying to do is to raise funds, and that's where everybody comes in, um, to get boats and boat engines to get through the area, uh, to get power generators, food supplies, water, tents, and blankets for the people. Um, it's very devastating to see. So keep them in prayer, please. Um, also want to keep uh, the Feelins in prayer. That's that family that came um, a couple months ago in regards to sharing with us that they're moving to Austria to help uh, share the gospel. Uh, this is an opportunity for us, uh, since we're not missionaries going to other countries and sharing the gospel in that way, we can share through them by helping support them. Um, remember that they are picking up everything. They're picking up their livelihood in the United States and they're moving to Austria, a country where they don't know the language really well. They're learning German now. And German is not an easy language to pick up. Um, they're, they're going <coughs> into a country where they're not really familiar with the culture. So we need to make sure, we need to pray that the doors would open for them, that they would easily slide into their culture, that they would be accepted. Um, their understanding about the culture is that the culture is very close to foreigners. So we need to pray that, that they have that ability to slide in and, and share the word with them. Um, they also have small children. Some things are easy for them, and some things are going to be difficult for them. So just keep them in prayer. Um, my understanding is that they were supposed to, they're supposed to leave in September to go to Austria. So keep them in prayer. Also, Love Life, I do want to touch up on uh, some data that was shared yesterday. So in 2016, there was 157 prayer walkers. In 2023, there was an additional 17,000 prayer walkers that were added. And this year, there's an additional 842 prayer walkers that were added. And out of those 842, there was 110 that actually go and walk in Pomona. And that's a 7.6% increase. So thank you, guys. Um, also, there was, in 2016, 573 pr professions of faith that were done. In 2023, there was 177 more professions of faith. And so far this year, there's been six professions of faith, and three of them were in Pomona. So thank you, Lord. Um, there, in 2016, there was 5,000 families that were saved. In 2023, there was 453 families that were saved. And this year, so far, there's been 18. So we need to keep praying for that. Um, in 2016, there were 50 abortion workers that quit. Amen. In 2023, there were four abortion workers that quit. This year, so far, there's been one abortion worker that's quit. So we need to keep praying, okay? Um, this year, there's been an additional 130 volunteers that are supporting Love Life, and there's been an additional 15 churches that have come on board with Love Life. So this is one of the things that I need you, God needs us to pray about, okay? Life is precious. It's very, very precious, Amen. okay? And not only do we need to pray about Love Life, and the saving of the unborn, but also continue praying for children. Continue praying. You see what they're trying to teach them in the schools that is not age appropriate. You see what they're trying, how they're trying to influence children to the dark side. It's funny when you talk about the dark side in Star Wars, but it's not funny when you talk about the dark side in real life. Amen. So please keep all of this in prayer. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Betty. Amen. I forgot one more thing. Remember um, with Mara Marillo, uh, September 10th through the 13th at Pomona Fairgrounds, there's going to be a big uh, tent revival. Pastor and them went a couple weeks ago, said it was awesome. So, again, there's more information downstairs, so don't forget that. But how many know it's good to give to God? Amen. 
again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it short for pastor. You can never outgive God. I'm telling you, church, when you get, put God first, he'll always make a way. I don't know how he does it, but he does. You know, we're taught certain math, uh, arithmetic in school, but God's math is not our math. One plus one in, in his category is not two. His is above that. But it takes our, our faith to get off the boat. Be a Peter. Get off the boat and test his faith and test your faith and see what he'll do for you. But not only to give to our tithes and offering, but also this is a chance we can give to missions, not only for the felines, but around the world. So again, but if you do want to give directly to the felines, I'm sure you just mark it on your envelope, and Ms. Barbara will, will make sure it goes to the right uh, place for that. Amen? But we have our box back there where we give our tithes and offering, or you can go to our website at www.newhopefellowshipsandemus.org and follow the link that says give. But let's pray for this, our tithes and offering this morning. Lord, again, we thank you, we praise you that we have the opportunity, Lord, to sow into your kingdom, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that this would multiply for your glory, Lord God, and for your purpose, Lord God, in people's lives, Lord God. I thank you that you bless those that are able to give, Lord God, and bless those that aren't able to give, Lord. Lord, and I thank you even for the missions, Lord God, that it would multiply and help those that are out there in the mission field, Lord, spreading your, your good news, Lord God. And again, we just give you all the praise and all the glory and the whole church says amen amen our children can be dismissed for children's church as well as our youth <clears throat> yeah if you've never experienced uh, a prayer walk uh, at love life we go every third weekend of each month and we've been doing that close to now three years and it's exciting because you're, you're getting in the gap literally. And, and your prayers, I believe, are saving lives. I really believe that. Saving lives. And, uh, and I always look at love life and what we do in, in to opposition to these. We don't call them doctors who, do, who terminate. We call them abortionists. We don't give them the honor to call them doctors, even though they've been trained to in the medical field they don't deserve the honor to be called a doctor they're abortionists and I, I i pray that as bam said that your mind would would have a sense not like well this is you know this church's opinion friends there's so much in the bible that tells us how precious your life is even before it was conceived i don't god is so wonderful so awesome that he wants us to follow his way, not the world's way, and even your own way. I mean, there are ways in our lives that we are responsible, but God wants us to, to be a, a risk taker for his love, to speak about his love and make a difference in the world we live in. Well, praise the Lord. We have a series out of the book of Romans. If uh, some of you have not um, been part of this Roman series. It's been going on a while, but we break in and out of it because of special speakers and stuff like that. But we are actually in the 12th chapter of Romans, and we're going to look at five verses, six verses from three to eight. And you have your notes. You that are home, I'm going to read uh, the, the, what, our, what we're going to be following here. And the title of this sermon to you that are here as well as uh, at home it's serving God and others with your spiritual giftings and talents. Well, we're going to look at that, what Paul has to say to the church in Rome. We see that with the book of Romans, what's Romans all about? If you, if you know your Bible somewhat, the book of Romans is to a people in Rome. These are Christians that Paul wrote a letter to, to encourage them, to continue to grow. And that's why we come to, to grow in this grace and kingdom that we have in Jesus Christ. And so the theme that we're looking at here is, being a disciple of Jesus Christ would have us to surrender in two directions. In loving service toward God and then loving and humbly serving others in God's kingdom in one's spiritual giftings and talents given to you. So you've been given, you know, you may think, well, I don't have any spiritual giftings or talents. Well, we're going to break that out a little bit. But when we do have uh, particular desires and we come into the kingdom, God starts to give you desires not just to say, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm thankful for a job, I'm thankful for a roof over my, 
my, my family. I get that. Those are basics, and that's, those are important basics. But then we get into a place where we begin to say, Lord, I desire to, to be used of you. I remember as a kid, you know, we all were kids once, right? We came through the womb, and we grew up with our parents' influence, and they influenced us. And I can remember just as a kid, and my background is, is Roman Catholic. I'm a born-again Catholic. I'm very proud of it. I follow what Jesus' mama said at the wedding of Canaan. Whatever Jesus says, do. And I follow her advice. And then the father at the Mount of Transfiguration said to Peter, James, and John, whatever my son says, you do. So I follow that advice. And I, I don't put anybody down unless it's very false in doctrine. And there are some places that uh, I don't believe in, in non-Trinitarian perspectives, such as Jehovah Witnesses, even, I'm sorry, even Mormons. I, I'm a Trinitarian. I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when that when that, that's that one tie that brings the church together. Trinitarian in thought. Father, Son, and Spirit. And out of that, we, we can work through some of these theological issues. Some may get their nose really bent way over there over certain issues. Let's love one another, amen? Continue to love and to care. Well, I remember as a six, seven-year-old, I remember telling, telling my mom and dad, I want to be a priest. And I, when I told my aunt... Oh, she went crazy on me. She was so happy. Oh, we're going to have a priest in the family. I'm six and seven years old, right? So <laughs> to her, that was exciting. But, you know, we all have these certain desires as we grow up. We, we, you know, there, for me, I, would, I felt re, I would get respect as a priest. So it was a little six, seven-year-old because I really respected our priest in West Covina, Father Bramble. And, uh, and, and I do. I respect anyone in the kingdom who, who wants to serve the Lord. No one's perfect in this world, but Jesus who came. And he says, if you look to me, I will help you through this journey. He says, in this world you have tribulation, John 16, But in me you will have your peace. And through me you'll overcome this world. And so as we get older, our thinking changes. Our thinking changes because of parental encouragement. Aunts and uncles. And then the school, like Ben was saying, we have... We have areas in our life where there is, you know, uh, what's going on in our, especially in California, a woke mentality where they're calling uh, things that the Bible says is not right. They're saying it's good. And, and we, as Christians, we, if we're not careful, we don't know the word, we, we might capitulate. Capitulate? In other words, give in. And when Bam says, well, I might give in to, to face that I can't preach in because the law would say you, you, can't, you can't say Jesus is the way. You know what? I'll go underground. You know what underground means? Okay, I'm still going to have church somewhere. And I'm going to preach Jesus. I'm not going to preach myself in that sense about me. I'm going to preach about him who saves humanity. But the world may say, you can't talk that way. And friends, the way governments are going, it could go that way. What our kids are being taught in the universities, in our colleges, in our high schools... And sadly, if you don't know this, in the elementary areas where they're saying, it's okay for you kids to think this way. You know, instead of having parents have the privilege to tell the kids about the birds and the bees. Now I get it, kids are kids. But to sanction it and say, oh, you do whatever you want. The kids, or be whatever you want. That's a, a scary thing. But we, at one time in our life, and this, I'm so grateful. May 25th, 1971, I got hijacked. I got hijacked by the love of Jesus Christ. He hijacked me. I didn't want to. I didn't. I, if I come across a religious station, I turn it. Whoa, are you kidding? I was into, you know, hard metal, getting getting high, stealing drugs, uh, and whatever. You know, I was. You think, well, gosh, you were a bad boy. We're all bad people. Think, well, I, I didn't do that. Friends, if you're envious of others and jealous, and if you cheated on your taxes and whatever, you're a bad boy. I mean, bad person. <laughs> we, God came into our lives. He hijacked you when you said, Jesus, you love me? When Henry Consuelo's husband said this, he said, Lord, forgive me. He started crying started crying because he knows. And I won't get into his story in a little bit. But like all of us, there was true repentance there. Henry is 80 years old. The prostate went to his bones. 
He doesn't want treatment. But the greatest treatment of all, he gave his heart to Jesus. So in that place, Henry was hijacked too. You and I were hijacked. And God has a purpose for every one of us. Everyone in this room has a purpose on this whole planet. But if you want to do your own thing, God is not going to make you do what you don't want to do. He is not a control freak. You might say, well, pastor, he's, he's making me feel guilty. And blah, blah, blah. I come here and, he, and all, all Bam's talking about is giving. Well, he's not saying to give so much for the church. It's really for you. You want to sow abundantly into this kingdom that has who, this God who owns a cow on a thousand hills, and you want to control your little measly this? It's up to you. He's not going to make you give. He's not going to make you come into the kingdom. But it's a wise thing to step in. And the Bible says this, and this is a beauty out of Psalms 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in all his ways. The Lord has a way to draw you into the kingdom. But he's not going to make you because you're going to all of a sudden get it. But he, he, your steps, God knows. He, he's alpha and omega. He knows the beginning and the end. That's why I can't describe God. I'm not going to try. I just, as Hebrews 11:6 6 says this, by faith, we, we believe that he is and that he will reward you and me if you diligently seek him. You don't have to seek him. You have to do anything you want. You can do whatever you want. But the wise one would prepare his life for one day when you have a departure. We have all had loved ones depart. All of us. And if you haven't, you will. And you will depart as well. But we, in that one sense, we need to really prepare, not for retirement, but when we say goodbye to our loved ones, because you will. And that's the wise person, because God's made your steps a certain way. And he says, but until you do, I have purpose for you. James says this in the book of James, chapter 4, 13 through 15. I like this. He says, come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go and do such and such a city or spend time in a city and spend a year there. Buy and sell and make, make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, even today. For what is your life? It is like a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall do and live this way or that. That's the wise person. And God has a purpose. And while we're here, what his purpose is is that he wants to use you and I. I have a hard time with any theologian, I don't care who it is, who would say, this is the top of the bray right here. As a pastor, a teacher, you've heard me many times. Uh, we have people in this congregation that preaches. Some haven't gone to school, some have. I don't care. But if you don't go to this school, Bedroom Bible College, you're not going to come up here and just give me your, a little song and dance. No, maybe God touched your life. I'll let you come up here. Not that I'm anything. You know, I don't want to deceive myself like I'm something because really I'm nothing. That's what Paul says. So God, what I have, it's all because of you. But people that would come in here, and yes, they would share the word because they, they go to the great school. What's the great school? It's BBC, Bedroom Bible College. That's the great college. You say, well, I, I hope pastor just really speaks to me. Well, don't offend anybody, pastor. <laughs> I'm an offense all the time to me and, because I, I make mistakes. Please forgive me. And you know what? I will forgive you too. And you know what? Let's dance before this king, this God, who wants us in the, the, the realm of his life and the beauty of his glory, but giving him all the praise, not taking it for ourselves. That's not healthy. Oh, give me an attaboy. I'm okay with, hey, that was good or whatever. But Lord, it's unto you because you helped me. I would like us, if we would, as we go into this place of our, our text, if you'd stand with me one more time, just one more time until the end, <laughs> and we're going to read the Word of God and what we're looking at in our text and being a disciple of Christ and the giftings God has given you or the talents or what you may desire. We're going to look at that in a minute too. And friends at home, the verse we're looking at is, is Romans chapter 12, verse 3 through 8. For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, by the way, we'll break this down. What, what is the body? It's not your physical body. It's this body right here of believers. This is the body of Christ right here. 
that all the members do not have the same function. We talk about giftings. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differ according to the grace that is, is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us as, if prophecy, let us as prophecy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it to our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Thank you, Lord. Speak to our hearts, all of us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Paul is saying here in this, this verse, he's talking about grace that's given to all, all of us. So there's a grace given to him. And then he says, and among us as well, we have a grace. But what happens is, is we have an ability to be blessed with giftings and talents, and that's all good. And there are some that are very talented. There are very smart people. One time when I was doing some graduate work, there was a guy, his name was Billy. And Billy, the next week we, uh, we came back and the professor said, well, what did I talk about? I'm going, Shh, what did he talk about? I could hardly remember what we talked about two minutes ago. And Billy gave him everything that he talked about the week before. I'm going, Billy, you're strange. Man. How can you remember that? So there are some people that just have talent. There's some people that are just smart. I fell down the fall, when I say the fall, when Adam and Eve made a mess. You know, Lord, I didn't. You didn't give me all the talents like Billy. But you know what I am? Thank you. And, but what we do have, God is asking us what you have in talents, or, or we'll talk about these gifts in a minute, to walk with humility. Humility is an important ingredient. When I say ingredient, it's, a, it's an important avenue for us to be blessed by God. Humility is so important. And, and so Paul goes on, and, and in fact, not only Paul, but Micah says this. God says this to, to humanity. What does God require of you, O man, or O person? And Micah 6, 8 says this. He has shown you, O man, or person, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? It's an important place. I mean, to do the right things, but to also have compassion, mercy. Lana goes out with her son every other week. We went out a few weeks ago. A few people went out. There's a mercy of talent and grace that's been given to Lana and her son and others. Not many, but you know what? You can say, God, help me have more compassion and mercy there. So I don't get involved with the homeless. I don't have time. Well, if you were the homeless, if you were on the, on the side of the road, wouldn't you want someone to stop for you and help you? It's up to you. You don't have to do anything God says. Already pastor. But you know, the wise one would say, Lord, I want to follow you. I fear you, Lord, not to be afraid of him. I fear the Lord. I'm afraid to be away from him. Okay, I want to be close to him. I, Lord, I'm afraid. It's like, you know, if, if the family's doing something and all of a sudden it's like, what, you left without me? I want to be with you. God wants us to be with and part of him and his family. He doesn't want religion. He wants relationship. And so Psalms 139 says this, Oh, Lord, Search me and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. As believers, we have this tendency to go our own way, but we need to be honest with ourselves. We need to think soberly, as it says in, in this very verse, that we're to think soberly as God has dealt to each one of us a measure of faith. How honest are you with yourself? That's a real takeaway too. Are we honest of who we are in Christ, and even honest as a person. That's the sobering part. And what happens is, as we do this, I believe as we evaluate our lives, where, where am I, Lord? Do I, am, am I just going to church to church? Or am I just, did I ask you in my life, and then, hey, I, I just want to retire, and that's it, and then I'm going to go to heaven? God has so much more. I'm sorry, he has so much more. And one of the things, and I, I got to share um, with Bill and Darlene, you know, I, I'd, rather have, I'd rather be Bill, who had, had his head almost smashed in, but he didn't. He has a hard head, but he could have died. He has a broken wrist, his left wrist. And um, I said, Bill, I'd rather be you than Henry. I mean, but Henry's going to heaven, but Henry has limited time. You take care of yourself, Bill. We prayed for him. 
And just like all of us, we have time right now to learn about him, to grow in him, to love one another, get involved. I get it. I have four in my family too. My four no more. No, I love Jesus more than my wife. I love Jesus more than my kids, my grandkids. I love more than you. But you know, in loving him, I get to love my wife in a, the right way. In relation. I get to love my daughters, my grandchildren. And you know what? He, he helps me to see better. Not always, because sometimes I can still become self-centered. Me, myself, and I. God wants us to be humble people and not to just you know, be, be so humble and weak. And when, hum, humility is not weakness. Humility is this. It's like a meekness. It's, it's power under control. But humble people do not think poorly about themselves. They just don't focus on themselves. Let me say that again. Isn't that kind of cool? Humble people don't think poorly about themselves. They just don't focus on themselves. But proud people, even religious people, even pastors and, and others in the body can become in that place off track because they're focused on their talents, their giftings. God wants you to be a humble servant. A spiritual people, we stumble when we when we're being used by God without humility. We stumble. God's using us. And that's a wonderful thing to be used of God. But when people say, well, thank you. Man, you did a good job. Whoever you may be, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. It's unto you. That's where you're going to stay healthy. That's where you're going to grow. Not like, oh, man, I'm, I'm, they're, they're coming to hear me. Are you kidding? Get over yourself. They're coming because they're hungry. And pray that God will give them a hungry heart. Humility cures worldliness. He gives more grace. Therefore, he says, but God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. It doesn't matter if, you're, if you know a lot about the Bible. There's a lot of Bible thumpers that, well, I know the Bible. And i got to be careful, too, because I can throw down, too. And, I, and I, it's like when I go away, I'm thinking, that, Lord, I, I just sense that was not pleasing. I don't want them to know what I do, but what you do for them. Amen? Amen? What they, God can do for you. Not, well, look what I'm doing. No, what God can do for you. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he'll lift you up. Here's, I love this passage out of James, chapter 3. It's the heavenly wisdom with humility versus demonic wisdom of pride. And it's plain scripture. Listen to what it says. It's out of James chapter 3, 13 through 15. I love this passage. It says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. In other words, with, the, with humility of, of his wisdom. But if you have bitter envy, and that's what happens with us Christians. We get envious of other Christians. Well, they got more. And they're this and this. We, we, we need to be careful. Paul's talking to Christians, not unbelievers. But if you have bitter envy and are self-seeking in your heart, do not boast against the truth and lie against the truth. Because we begin to seek after importance in the church. And that's when we start to stumble. For where there is envy and self-seeking exists, confusion, every evil thing are there. But the wisdom, I love this. Listen to the wisdom from God. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Oh, that felt good, Lord. That, it's like going into crystal clear stream or a lake, like Lake Tahoe, so crystal clear. It 20 feet down, it's like, well, this is like the beauty and the pureness of God. It's pure. And so then it's peaceable. It's gentle, willing to yield. You don't have all the answers, Bob, or all of us. I'm willing to yield in my conversation. 70% of every conversation is this, listening. Are you going to listen or are you going to always want to interrupt? And we, we, we all, I mean... I got to be careful of that one because I, I do like to talk. One time I had a speech impediment and I prayed, Lord, I want my words to be like apples of gold and pictures of silver from the proverb. I want to, but I wasn't saying I want to be a pastor. I just, Lord, I, I had a speech impediment. So people with speech impediment, they don't talk a lot because when you have a impediment, people know like, oh, something's wrong here. And so I prayed and Lord did heal that. And there's other healings, but, but, what happens is you're willing to yield. Full of mercy and good fruits. This is God's wisdom. Now you begin to act with meekness and humility. You, without partiality, without hypocrisy, now the fruits of righteousness sown in, 
in peace by those who make peace. God has dealt with us a measure of faith. Do you have that faith to God? I need that help. I want to do that. And so Paul goes on, he says, for many of us are members of one body. It's not just all about the pastor, the worship people, or people that do stuff in the church. God has a purpose for every person. God does. And so we're all members, do not, but we don't have the same function. I mean, you know, you think about the fingerprints. Do you know right now that they're taking the eye, because every eye is different, like the fingerprints, and for identification, you look into the, the scanner, you're in. Or, you, you know, if you go to Fitness 24, you put your finger in there, you're in. We know exactly who you are. We, we're all different. But in the body of Christ, there's a functioning that you have that I don't have, and we need you. And so that's what the body of Christ is about. The, we are members of the body of Christ, and your desire is, Lord, would you use me? I hope. You have skills that I don't have. You think, well, I, what skills do I have? You can help out in many ways in the church. But, you know, if you don't want to say, well, Pastor, is there anything I can do here? Angel and I, we used to go for years down to uh, Montebello. And, pff, I count on Angel. We had a great time with, with Loopy and best cookies in the world. But you know what? Little things like that is helpful within the body of Christ. Mike, Cowboy Mike, helps out. He didn't wait for Barbara to, you know, she asked for candy. He brings in so much candy. It's like, my gosh, this candy gave me a choke a mule. Those little things make the body function. It's important. And you have skills that I don't have. Like I said, we experience that success of the past, but God may use that very success to help in the church as well. And there's giftings that God has according to Scripture. But we are all members, but not of the same function. Spiritual gifts that God wants to use. He wants to give you too. And many are, were in one body. And here's the beautiful thing. We have a human body. And, you know, you know, you can live without your eyes. You can live without your ears. You can't live without your heart. You can't live without your pancreas. You can't live without your livers, your liver and your kidneys. And that's the way the body of Christ is. You think, well, we just we got to have the important people. No, God wants all people. He gives this analogy. Paul uses because of many of us, we're always talking about spiritual things. We may not understand it, so Paul brings it to our level and brings the human anatomy, saying the body of Christ is like your own body. It functions, and it, and it functions in a unity. It's not in contention. We have contention in the church. We have church splits. It's ugly. God, what if you all of a sudden say, I don't want my arm? Well, that, you'd be handicapped. The church can be handicapped when there's people that, you know, are whatever. They have, we have issues. We walk with a unity where God says, love, forgive. God, I want you to forgive me, but she hurt me. He hurt me. My kids hurt me. My grandkids hurt me. They, and but God would say, forgive, as God has forgiven you. Paul uses this analogy, 1 Corinthians 12, 20, 28. He says, but now indeed there are many members, yet one body. He's talking about this, but also the body of Christ. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. We need everyone. You can live without those, but you need them. Nor again the head to the feet. You can't live without your head. You can live without your feet. I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are of necessity. And those members of the body which we think are less honorable, on those we bestow greater honor. Pancreas. I lost a good friend, pancreatic cancer. Maybe you have. Somewhere down the line. It's not an ugly, I mean, it's, it's an ugly side. It's not a pretty picture. But there, that body part in us is very important. Just as people that think, well, I'm not important. God, you don't know what God's going to do through you because God has purpose. But our presentable parts have no need. And I was, wait a minute, I need my hands. But now he's saying, in other words, you can live without your hands. There are people, and you've seen them on YouTube or places where they don't have any arms. And they're just there, but, they, but man, they have a mind and a brain and a heart that's just, it, they're kicking it. They're doing great. But there are some people that's like, <laughs> they got it all, they're beautiful or whatever, and they think they're so beautiful, and they'll let you know it. And you're going, I don't want to be their friend. Because they're so caught up with me, myself, and I. And it's like, they don't realize, they can't see it. But, you know, that's what happens. But in the body of Christ, everyone is important. 
And those members of the body which are unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, even this, having even given greater honor to the parts which lack. You think, I'm nothing. God says, you're, no, don't accept that lie. I have a purpose for every one of you. That those should, there should be no schisms in the body. A schism is a division, disunity. You don't want disunity in your body. You know and all of a sudden you have a, 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 an ulcer in the stomach or all of a sudden you have something on your body. He doesn't want anything to cause your body to have problems. A schism in the body of Christ is not healthy. But that the members should have the same care for one another. Love one another. Care for one another. Any father, any grandfather loves it when their kids get together and love one another. How beautiful is that? When we love and care for each other. And if one member suffers, all the member suffers with it. Or if one member is honored, we all rejoice in it. You know, when anyone does something great in the body of Christ, whatever it is, and said, well, I got to do this, and I got to do that. And you know, we should be very grateful that we have people that would go to the homeless. But you know, she represents, and this, these people who do this, represents all of us, and we all get the honor. But that doesn't mean, well, I, I don't let her go do this. No, we, we get the honor as a body. But there again, maybe this hand needs this hand to pull something up. Amen? And that's what happens. We need to strengthen each other. Not just say, well, that hand can do it all by themselves. Like Bill, he was out there, and it would have been nice when Bill Doucette was making his house look beautiful, it would have been nice if he had someone else to help him. But he did it. He, I'm, I'm independent. I'm going to do it. I can do this. And next thing you know, Darlene's looking outside, and she sees, she couldn't believe her eyes, a person laying out there, and there was blood, a lot of blood. And, you know, I mean, Bill's like a lot of men. You know, we, we can do it. And it's nice to say, would you give me a hand? Don't be so proud that you don't need someone to help you. We need one another. Point two, the grace of God equips believers to one's gifting purposes. Having these gifts differ according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, what is prophecy? Prophecy is like preaching to encourage you, but prophecy sometimes could even come from your own soul and spirit to encourage others. We talk about tongues and prophecy and laying on of hands and healings, teaching. There's teachers. There's teachers. That I've had people come say, I just sense I got a, 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 just a desire to teach. But you know, the more you do it, the better you get. And the more you encourage one another, just even reading the Word, the better you're going to get to understand. Everything you do, keep doing it. It's a weightlifter that lifts weights. And he gets stronger. Spiritually, you will get better in these giftings and as the Spirit helps manifest in each one of us. For what purpose? For you? No. For the profit of all. That's what the Scripture says, 1 Corinthians 12, 17. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For us to profit. Not just, well, gee, I got a ministry to be a pastor. I got a ministry to be an evangelist. I got a ministry to do this. But not many people say, well, I got a ministry to help clean up the church. I have a friend here, and he cleans up the yard, takes out the trash. I can count on him. He's the most faithful person in this church. I can count on him. Doesn't have a car, doesn't have a job. Um, he has some issues, but I can count on him. Most faithful person. You would think, well, wow, take trash out, pick weeds. Most faithful. He's in this room right now. The gift of the Spirit is not given just for you to sit on. They're not, use your talents. Use these gifts. But to help others know Jesus. And grow in Christ yourself. You don't use it, you're going to lose it. The gifts and calling God will give to you. They're, they're not, he won't take them back. But if you don't use them, <laughs> they're going to sit there. You know, like a... Like a I got your tool like I, I, I do my own yard work. I got a nice lawnmower. If I don't use it, guess what? It's just going to sit there. And there's going to be problems in my marriage. The weeds are growing, this and that. I mean, you've got to 
You know, you got a tool. Use it. And make your life like my yard beautiful because you want to make other things beautiful and other people beautiful too. It's just not about you being beautiful. It's about you being used to make others beautiful. Amen? That's what, the, that's what this kingdom is about. He come for you, for every tongue, tribe, and nation. The Christian, the rust factor is this. If you don't use things that God has given you, you lose it. And you might say, well, what about, you know, what about these gifts? It says in 1 Corinthians 14.1, it says this. He says, pursue love, but also desire spiritual gifts. What are spiritual gifts? Well, these are ones we just talked about, prophecy and, and these different things. And so we use these things. Proverbs says this, because what we're doing here, we're cultivating God's gifting just from preaching, encouraging to keep going forward, just not saying, well, I went to the service. I, I kind of hear what the pastor's saying. But I, my brain is at the Dodger Stadium. I can't wait till we're done here. By the way, I'm not a Dodger fan anymore. I don't know what I, my, either ten, Texas, when, when, when these, uh, sorry for just going off script a little bit, but when these nuns of indulgences, these men dressed up as women and nuns mock our Lord and Savior, and they do a, a pole dance on the cross. Can you imagine? I've never been to a strip club, but I've seen pictures, you know, it's like, whoa, and these girls are pole dancing. I mean, these are beautiful women. It's like, whoa, okay, it catches the guy's attention. But when you take and you mock my Jesus, and then you pole dance, and then you allow them to come as a, as a group to my, I love the Dodgers, I loved them all my life. I still have my stuff. I, I, I need some healing there. But Texas did not allow gay month in their stadium. I might become a Texas Ranger. It's up to you. You know, I, I just, God didn't make us, you know, Adam and Stevie made us Adam and Eve. And without Adam and Eve, there, we wouldn't be here. Sorry, that means, it, it, um, friends, it, it's the Bible says. So it's like, well, the pastor's getting rough on these guys. Now, everyone's welcome in this church, everyone. But we will tell them, the Bible says this. And that's the beauty of our walk. But in your Christian way as you walk, begin to hunger for God with a desire to be used. It begins, but maybe, hey, how about staying a little bit longer and cleaning up? Ah, that's a pastor's job. Why don't you beat me to it? Because, you know, I ain't going to wait for you. i got to clean up. There's other things. And there's, you know, why not? And, by the way, they'll wait for you at the lunch, lunch line. They will. You'll eat. And so we encourage one another. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. One person, we, sh- we encourage one another. Be useful in what God gives you, the talents. First Corinthians, as I said, first one. 14.1 says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. What is prophecy? To encourage others. And I won't get into all the detail of it, but, but and don't be, don't, be, don't be independent. Well, I'm who I am. I, I got friends. They won't come to church because they got Jesus. I don't need the church. They don't know their Bible. They sound like they do. They sound like they do. Some even don't believe in there's a heaven and a hell. Jesus, the scripture says, to have the son has life. If you don't have the son, you don't have life. And God doesn't want religious people either. There's some religious people that think they're cut above. That's between them and God, and I don't want to be their lawyer. (laughs) Get them into heaven. Jesus is already my advocate. God, you love me. Me? I'm nothing. That's a good place to be, honestly. Paul says, don't you know, and he's talking to people that think they're cut above. He says, don't you know you're nothing? Because if you think you're something, you're self-deceiving. Humility, God's going to say, to you in the back, the guy in the back row, come on up to the front. I'm not worthy. That's a good attitude. Because God knows that you are made in his image. But when you exalt yourself and become independent, like look at me, there becomes a separation. Now you are the body of Christ. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 27, and individually members of it. You were all members. That's a beautiful, I love being on the team. God does not want you to do this alone. He wants you to be interdependent with each other and him. 
this church, this is never, and, and I always correct people, this is not Pastor Bob's church. I will say this has never been my church. And I, when you say it around me, uh, uh, you know, you say, well, how could he correct us? He can't do that. He's, he's just, well, he's a pastor, but he can't do no correction. I'll correct you on this one. This is Jesus' church. There's one pastor, and there's one shepherd, and it's Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm an under I'm an under shepherd, and by the grace of God, I, I stand here. And that's, that's all I, I'm going to say on that. This is not my church. This is his church. And you're part of his beautiful, mystical, as a bride. I'm a bride too. I'm a bride as well. Be interdependent, helping one another. Proverbs 16.5 says this. The Lord says, everyone proud. Proverbs, listen, this is heavy. Proverbs 16.5 says this. Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, none will go un- unpunished. We don't want to hang around proud people. I'd rather hang around people of low stature. I really would. That oh, I got all these pastor friends. No, 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 no. I do, I, and and you may too. But you know what? Don't forget the ones that are insignificant. In fact, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, says this through. In the book of Hebrews, he says, he says, be merciful and attentive and don't be partial because when you are, you never know when God may send an angel who comes, who, who comes and, and you, you don't want to entertain someone that looks like a homeless person. They may be an angel in disguise. You say, well, well how, what does that say? In the Bible. I, I, there's a whole bunch more, but everybody's saying, I got a lunch date. So do I. No, not really. But would you stand with me? Stand firm in this living life of faith and begins by exercising your faith in Christ and through him. God wants to use you. And you know what? I do believe, and even for me daily, I, I want to walk soberly and I ask God, would you, Lord, I, I do things that sometimes I say things that hurt people. I've hurt people in this church. I've hurt people in my family. But Lord, I'm sorry. And I go to those brothers or sisters if I have. And that's healthy. And take your licks if they give you a licking back. But walk in humility. And one of the places we begin with humility is what he's done for us. You see, he died on the cross, a perfect one, died on the cross for us sinners. And if you've never repented or even rededicated your life, this would be a great time. But you that have you, maybe for the first time, we get a lot of hits. Some people, what is, this, what is this guy saying up here? It's Jesus. He loves you. He died for you. And you're not perfect. And you know you made mistakes. And God wants to forgive you. But unless you repent, the Bible says you'll die in your sins. And so you repent, Lord, forgive me. Like, like Henry did in crying. And then believe what he did on this cross. He died for your sins and he rose the third day. Those that believe with their heart with all their soul. And then when you call on Jesus, the Bible says you'll be saved. And that's the beginning of your search. If you've never done that, I plead, beg you, do that. And if you need to rededicate your life even this morning, I do this all the time. Because I'm, I'm a mistake ready to happen. I'm saved, but I'm still a mistake ready to happen. And my wife lets me know for sure. So Lord, we come to you. Lord, I rededicate my heart to you this morning. Lord, I want more of you and less of me. As Lord, you said in your prayer, Lord, give me this day my daily bread. Not just lunchtime, breakfast or dinner. But Lord, you're the manna from heaven, the true bread from heaven to satisfy the soul of humanity. Lord, I pray for us all that that would be our heart's desire and our rededication to know you more, to learn more about you. And so, Lord, I pray a blessing for my friends, that the Lord would bless you, the Lord would keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone say, amen. God bless you. We'll see you downstairs. Hey, do we got a